So, Lance, what did you think of the road? Um, I absolutely loved it. I really, really liked it. I was an emotional wreck by the end. And I sat there, looking at, sitting there over the sound of the end credits with tears running down my face. And I really liked it, and I'm glad I saw it. And Because I, I don't like post-apocalyptic movies. Right, why is right. that? Oh, it's fine in a bit. They should be like good westerns, really, but uh, but I find them very, really, like they are. So, so I, I mean, tell me about some of the things that moved you in the in the film, based on the fact that you hadn't seen, hadn't read the book, which I <coughs> which I have. Well, so I'll give I, it a different um, perspective. I've, as you know, I've just become a father for the first time, and the whole relationship between the father and the son, and the fact that he will do anything, anything to protect his boy, mm -hmm. really came across, and I found that incredibly moving. What I really liked was the, I mean, the casting. If, I, th I believe that if anyone else was cast, the whole supposition, the father and son thing, it wouldn't have worked. Mm. I think Viggo Mortensen, because of he carries so much weight with him, this very noble guy, especially with younger audiences, mm. he carries this nobility with him and a strength that you can believe. And, uh, and that's, I found that incredibly moving. And um, the fact that the... Um, the boy looks so much like his mother. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. He looked really Not like much his like mother. Viggo Mortensen. No, but no, no, but like the mother. And she's a constant reminder. Yeah. That she's, I mean, she would be a, what they call a structuring absence, but you do see her in flashback. Yeah. And I had my own idea about what the devastation of the world was. I mean, what? The breakup of the family. Oh, I see. Interesting. So her leaving. It, that's didn't need their, the explanation beyond... That is their life. Right. The devastation of it's the just, whole world. It's just, don't go. I don't yeah. want you to go. Yeah. Why would you go? The you whole, know? Their whole world's falling apart. I can't say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that journey that they're on mm. is their life. Yeah. I have to say, you know, I didn't like the movie at all. Why? I, I, well... Is I, it because you read the book? I, it's not because I read the book. No, I think it's because... Um, although now, you, you know, because you like it, I'm... I'm <laughs> it, it made me suspicious that maybe it was because I'd read the book. Right. It, but it's too simplistic to say that. I think I tried to approach it as a movie, but the uh, you know on its own terms. And it's sometimes possible to do that, even with a book that you that you know very well. I think you try and say, okay, well, look, let me leave that behind, and you can say, okay, you know, and and you're kind of absorbed by that. And maybe the fact that you know it doesn't, it isn't. Uh, it didn't grip me from the get-go because it wasn't telling me anything I didn't know already. Mm. Maybe that was a problem. Mm. Um, whereas as soon as you see something in an adaptation of a book where they do something mm. unexpected, you're like, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. They've, you know, added that character or they've, oh, they've cut an entire, mm. or they've go gone without voiceover, mm. you know. Um, I thought Viggo Mortensen was very good, but I have to say I disagree with your uh, suggestion that he, he, you know, he works b because of all of the emotional weight I thought you could but you could more or less put anybody in that role oh, and, really? and bedraggle him up and give him a little bit of you know teary teary eyed and I mean uh, you know I could I could more or less see any actor oh, of a similar that, that's, that's, generation that's cold, you know? man. having said that I thought he gave a good performance but you know nothing special I mean you know he, to me he was interchangeable with let's say Christian Bale in The Machinist oh listen if Christian Bale had in that scene where he finds the piano in the house mm -hmm. and breaks down, wouldn't have believed it for a second. Really? I wouldn't have believed it for a mm. second. No way. Okay. No way. And, and Christian Bale couldn't have brought that warmth. There's nothing there for me. Mm. In Christian. That's why he works right. as Bruce Wayne, probably. <laughs> right? But, but I think I believe that, that, that scene by the piano. Mm. Really, yeah. really did. No, I mean, I, I, nothing against Viggo Mortensen's performance. I didn't think he, uh, what I'm saying is I don't think he's the only actor who could have played it. Ed Harris well, could have played it it would have been oh, brilliant yeah. I was a bit disappointed by the kid I thought the kid's performance what? was ru rubbish yeah. what are you absolute, talking about absolute rubbish no seriously why well for a start I thought he was he was older than I expected him to be which was a bit of a shame how old is he in the book does it say how it old doesn't he is? say how old he is but you assume that it's about 8 to 10 years 10 years at the upper end 8 at the maybe All 7 right, or so 6 so the kid's what 11 or 12 yeah, but he looked older. It's not, it doesn't matter how old he is. Look at Judy Garland and, and you know, Michael J. Fox was 61 when he played, <laughs> when he played Marty McFly, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But, um, no, I thought he looked too old, and so I didn't ha get the vulnerability from him that I needed. I needed to know that, the, that without the father, the kid wasn't going to be able to make it. John Hillcote, I think, he's, as far as I know, he's only directed two films, Ghost of the Civil Dead and The Proposition, the Proposition yeah. and both of them are magnificent. Oh, Proposition I, is fantastic. Fantastic. Both of them written by Nick Cave. But I just thought the adaptation was like, you know, there, there are 
Richard Price said the way that he adapted, um, he adapted uh, Night in the City, the yeah. film he did the, yeah. wrote the remake. Of. I, and I like that a lot. Me too. And you know what he did? He said he watched it once and then he didn't watch it or refer to it again while he was writing the remake. Right. Now, whether you like the Jessica Lange, Robert De Niro version of, of the movie or not, that is a really interesting way. I think, you know, reading The Road once, then binning it and you know, making your adaptation from what you remember. Yeah. That, to me, is what I wanted to feel in, mm. the, in the film. Any road movie is going to be episodic in a, in a way. And the book, is, and any road story, yeah. you know, is going to be episodic. But it doesn't have to feel like there's going to be, you know, captions coming up saying day two or day... And I literally felt that. It was just like, oh, right, it's going to be encounter of the week kind of thing, you know? One of the things the book's been... Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the book's been criticised for is the fact that the woman's, uh, the the wife's motivations are not, you know, made clear. I think in the movie they were actually. She said it's not, uh, you know, I don't want to survive. I don't want to just survive. Yeah. You know, everything that she'd given up from the blossom to the, you know, the fresh water to the ability to, you know, yeah. hear something new for the first time to see something, you know, mm. all of that had gone for mm. her. So I kind of got it. But and to me, that's the crux of the whole film. That's why I say that the road, the journey, mm. is the devastation of their lives after she leaves. Yeah. That's why I think it's, it's so important. In the book, I felt I got the sense that um, she didn't want to bring the child into the world in the first place. And there is a little bit of that in yeah, the there film, is, there, is, there? there is, is a bit. When she says something kind of very... On that. I don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen. It wasn't, I don't want this to happen now. Yeah. It, she does say now, but she means now after all that's happened, obviously. Not now, because I'm about to watch my programmes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that. But, the, but talking about the piano scene, I, I, I like that you like that scene. And one of the things I did like was the almost kind of... Um, it reminded me of, of Alan Moore's Watchmen, actually. The way that mm. the little things inspired... Uh, a cut from one, oddly enough, you know, from one frame to another, and there was a cut. Like the way the comb, him finding the comb, yeah. the hair comb in the boy's possessions. You see, that's what I wanted to feel. I didn't feel any of those I things. Did. I did. I, you know, had my heart ripped out of me and, and I did. slapped down on the table and beaten with a hammer while I was reading the book. But the f oh, film really? didn't do any of those things for me. It was like, you know, watching a kind of, yeah. I, I, the more, more you talk, the more I believe that you've been affected by reading this book. Yeah, fair because enough. I, because I felt those things. The music, much like I love Nick Cave's, you know, soundtracks. Um, I felt that if No Country for Old Men could get away with having no music, surely there's a there's a, a compelling argument for uh, for the road not having any music, just maybe ambient sound. You know the sound that you heard over the over end credits? The credits. Right. That was brilliant. That was brilliant because it was the sound of life. It's the sound of and, the And everything well, else throughout the yeah. film was the sound of death. So why have music playing, telling you how to feel, when you've got these two guys trudging through this completely des hmm. desecrated landscape, yeah. What, yeah, what some of which was filmed in a, in a, des in a in the you know, post apocalyptic uh, um, city of, of you know or, or Louis, post apocalyptic Louisiana mm. if you like which I thought was brilliant the mm. fact that they that they chose uh, that place to film when he found the piano if you'd had no music up to that point when he and found just, the piano and you heard, heard those piano first thinking? few notes you'd yeah. feel oh my god you'd feel yeah. something you'd feel what he yeah. felt because you'd been starved of music up to that point the grass was dead the trees were dead so there's no more oxygen you know, the, everything everywhere was, was screwed. You yeah. know, you didn't think that, oh, well, Australia will be all right. But that, that, again, be... that reinforces my belief about this breakup of the family yeah. um, metaphor. Yeah. That that's how you feel or how you would feel when your world falls apart. There's no hope. Yeah. And that's what... That's true. And all you want to do is listen to Nick Cave music, which, <laughs> is, of course, it. you got. And so, so it was an emotional what? apocalypse, uh, 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 let's it. say, the breakup that's of a... Right. That's how I okay. read it. If I've been moved to tears, mm. I, lo I, I know that film's done its job for me. Yeah. Right? And I cry... I, d I probably cry too easily. But, yeah. It was... And for me, it was, the movie was a teeth... What I call a, a teeth puller. Yeah. It was so agonising to watch. Right. I'm going... Wow. Like that. Wow. I, I really, really loved it. <laughs>